it's been presented as a sort of binary choice between May's deal on the one hand or the automatic no deal. But this is obviously going to be an iterative process and there may be various stages to it. If the deal is rejected, that then there is a chance for Parliament to step in and to either amend the motion in favour of another deal, another option, or to give direct instructions to the government as to how to proceed. And that then opens the field to a range of other options. One may be revocation of staying in the EU, or it may mean substituting the political declaration with another form of arrangement. That may be the Norway style um, arrangement becoming an EFTA member, or it could be another form of free trade agreement, such as the Canada model. They are stopping payments to the EU, stopping immigration, and taking back control over our own laws um, so that Parliament can make and unmake laws rather than having uh, the foreign legislature or the Court of Justice determining the law. Um, and then the last element was the freedom to agree free trade agreements with the rest of the world. Mm. And on the one hand, you have um, no deal, which obviously passes these red lines with flying colours. At the other end of the spectrum, you have remaining in the EU, which raises red flags to these red lines. And then in the middle, you have various compromise options, of which the Prime Minister's deal is one of them. Canada, the Canada option, it is to the left of the spectrum. It's slightly worse than no deal because you would have to continue payments to the EU and you would have to accept um, some free movement of persons coming, coming in as part of the deal. Um, on the other um, side of the spectrum, between the Prime Minister's deal and remaining, there is the Norway option. But it is a, a question of, um, of which uh, compromise can be made between these, these competing red lines that also conflict each other to some degree.